Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today in this video we're going to do a reaction of what is at stake in this NBA Finals. Celtics and Mavericks right now are battling it out. Celtics as I'm recording this are up 2-0. Game 3 is tonight. We'll see if the Mavericks win. So maybe 2-1, maybe 3-0. But I'm curious what they say is at stake when it comes to Jason Tatum and Luka Doncic in this final. So hey, I'm going to go ahead and react to this. More content like this. Make sure to like this video. Let's hop right into it. The current precedence of the NBA is that there are no dynasties in the league, and thus there is an opportunity for a new dynasty to emerge or for a gridlock era to take place as it did in yeah. the mid-2000s after Kobe and Shaq split, allowing for a number of NBA teams to win it all in an unpredictable fashion. But let's not put the cart before the horse. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's hone in on the specific the matchup, the, best the Dallas Mavericks versus the Boston Celtics. The Mavs have only faced the Heat in the finals before, but only one team is truly in the hot seat, and that is Boston. The Celtics indeed are in the hot seat far more than the Mavericks are, mainly in the sense that one, most of this core has been to the finals before in 2022. Yes, some pieces are different, but the top players are the same. And this time, the Seas are facing an opponent who for the most part have never been to the finals, aside for Kyrie Irving. This doesn't mean the Mavs are complete underdogs, like how last season we had the 8th seeded Miami team yeah. go up against the Nuggets. The Mavericks indeed do have pressure to win it all too this year. Kyrie Irving is 32. I'd be forgetting that the uh, Heat were the 8th seed and they did that and they just did not do nothing in the finals. As he gets older, he will be exiting his prime. He will still be a high level player, but if we're talking absolute peak prime, from a physical standpoint, this is the part of the mountain where you are still pretty high, but you're definitely starting to descend lower. Also, how many times is Luka going to completely avoid the Nuggets on his path to the finals? Interestingly enough, Luka and Jokic have never faced in the postseason I was hoping for ever. It. Had this happened, who knows if the Mavericks would have made it this deep. Again, you know, you know, the thing that sucks too is that how the Timberwolves going to beat the Nuggets and then they not going to put up no fight in the conference finals. Like, what was the point of that? Y'all be ruining stuff, bro. Y'all, If y'all ain't going to make, make it interesting in the next round, bro, don't even try, bro. And how many guarantees are we going to get where Luka avoids the Nuggets in the postseason? While the Mavericks certainly had a harder path to the finals, avoiding the Nuggets and getting the Wolves, despite what the matchups might tell you, was their preferred opponent. But more importantly, you can easily say the same, if not worse, for the Celtics. In each yeah. playoff round, Mickey they faced a heavily Mouse. injured Eastern Conference opponent. They beat a <laughs> Jimmy Butlerless Heat team, then a Cavs team without Jared Allen, and then that same Cavs team lost no, Donovan yeah. Mitchell towards the I end of the show series. Him. And then they beat the Pacers with Tyrese having a hamstring injury that kept him out of game four. And even if the Pacers were healthy, that team was too inexperienced and just got done beating a heavily injured Knicks and Bucks team. When Dang the right. Celtics and Mavericks Mickey faced well. off twice during the regular season, the Celtics won both games quite handily. You can argue that the Mavericks have the best player on the court out of everyone's roster, but they are top heavy. The Celtics are the far deeper team. Yeah. But the Celtics also get passive at times. They are their own worst enemies. Of course, the regular season isn't always a good measuring stick for how they will perform in the finals, but it is something we can at least start with. It is fair to say that the Celtics have not been tested at all during this playoff run, which is why there's no excuse if they lose to their next opponent in the finals. In the same token, they can't choose their opponents. They came, they saw, they conquered and took care of business. But there's still one job left, the most important job, to beat their finals opponent. Speaking of opponents, both Kyrie Irving and Kristaps Porzingis yeah, will be facing their old team. Kyrie once played for the Celtics and there was drama there that ended it, and Kristaps once played for the Mavs and that didn't work out too well. Either player is going to get revenge on their former team. Except that's if Kristaps plays because he already missed the playoffs so far due to injury. With Jalen Brown winning yeah, the Larry again. Bird Eastern Conference Finals MVP award, if the Celtics win at all, this is an example that Finals MVP isn't necessarily a lock for Jason Tatum. So if Brown wins Finals MVP as well, Jason will still be looked at with some sort of asterisk on his career. Not that he should play selfishly either. I'm sure he would rather win a <laughs> ring and not the finals MVP than lead his team statistically but lose the series. I love how they got no I'm not the best shooter and I'm not the best defender and I'm not the best rebounder and I'm not the best passer. And am I even the best scorer? Am I even the best player? It's a great question. Um, if they win, the funny thing is Celtics, if Jalen Brown wins finals MVP then it's still 
like I know if you're a Celtic fan, you you still probably don't you want to win a championship, and I know you do, and that's like what are you saying? But like, if he wins MVP, you're like, oh dang, I really wanted Jason Tatum. It's like a this is a thing to it. Like if James Harden, I'm a Rockets fan. Chris Paul won the we won a championship, but Chris Paul was Finals MVP. I'd be like, yeah, okay, we won, but and I'm happy. But James Harden, you want you want the best player's legacy to be ascended as well. Um, and if it just turns out to be Jalen Brown, then we can just follow the Jalen Brown path. But um, like I said, the series ain't over yet, so you never know. But of course, deep down, I'm sure he would prefer both. And then there's the question on ESPN's mind. How would this 2024 NBA Finals impact LeBron's legacy? If Kyrie gets a second ring, he will prove that he can win a ring without the need of a point forward that has the body of a forward but the skill of a guard who averages nearly 27, 7, and 7 and can easily get triple doubles. Wait a minute. If Kyrie yeah. wins a ring, this That's is proof of why the Kyrie and LeBron duo worked and why the Kyrie and Kevin Durant duo did not work. Luka, like LeBron in many ways, is a versatile player who can both run the point and so score awesome. if need be. Well, Kevin Durant oh, is so awesome, talented, man. <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea to run him at the point unless you really have no choice. Kyrie, for the most part of his career, did play point guard on paper, but he's more of an undersized shooting guard in terms of how he actually plays. And this is why yeah. the Luka and LeBron combo works better than the KD combo, because Luka and LeBron technically play point guard despite their height saying they should play forward. Hard, hard and of play course, point. I'm speaking in terms of That's offense. Defense Harden. is a totally different situation. And the Celtics actually have an advantage here defensively, at least on paper. While Kyrie doesn't play defense consistently, when he does defend, he is pretty good at it, and we had seen him play amazing defense in the finals before. The Kyrie and Luka duo versus Jalen and Jason duo is one thing, but there's another debate amongst duos which is the most clutch duo of all time. Former Celtics legend Paul Pierce believes that Kyrie and Luka might not be the most clutch duo in NBA history, as he believes that the Paul Pierce and Ray Allen duo was much more clutch, which has nothing to do That's why I miss him on ESPN. ESPN... Paul Pierce was outstanding. I mean, his takes were, they, that's great. I don't care what y'all say is bad, whatever, it's funny. Do with this NBA Finals only because I don't think anything will convince Paul otherwise, as that will be his opinion no matter what. Paul Pierce is the GOAT, according to Paul Pierce. Bottom line though, here's what's at stake. If the Celtics lose this finals, the C in Celtics will stand for clowns, because there would be no excuse, especially with the highest paid player in the league on your roster, and your opponents being mostly nebulous to this stage of the postseason. Plus, you got home court advantage. The Celtics are the more rested team, and are facing a team that could be physically burnt out going through three really tough series. But if they lose, while well, they'll the be clowns, series. it wouldn't be frowning clowns, they will still be able to run it back next year, albeit with some slight changes. I don't think you blow up the whole roster, but again, they have a ton of pressure to win it now. Bottom line on what's at stake for the Mavericks, if the Mavericks lose this finals, the M in Mavericks will stand for maybe next year, but that's a big maybe. Going back to Kyrie's age, they better not waste this opportunity because now is definitely better than later. Though Luka is only 25 and his true prime is expected to be around 28, which is three years from now, Kyrie's window is much smaller, and who are you going to replace Kyrie to pair Luka with? That's not an easy question, even though Luka is a great talent. Never say never, there could be some surprises. If the Mavs <laughs> don't know how to get this thing done, Luka may want to leave the team. Again, this is way too early and essentially just a rumor That's at such this a point. Funny moment, but NBA man. lifers may be a thing of the past. Luka might not want to waste his prime playing for a mediocre team. Just look at what happened to Damian Lillard. He gave it his all, his all wasn't enough. Enough, but Lillard so never went, went Robin alongside Giannis, finals, and Giannis so. was giving the Bucks some heavy words, or at the very least, some heavy hints, suggesting that they better repair the franchise or he's up and out too. This series will set the tone for the future of the NBA. It would either symbolize that the Celtics are about to be the next dynasty, or it will symbolize that the age of the super team is gone, at least for the foreseeable future, and there would be an unpredictable wave on who will win the championship in the that. coming years. Parody, when everyone man. is stacked, no one is stacked. Because at the end of the day, only one team wins, and it's all or nothing. So you let me know down below who you think is going to That is funny. That freaking... His eyes, man. Um... There's a lot at stake for the Celtics. There's none like for the Mavericks. There's nothing at stake for real. Like obviously, it's you want to take advantage of opportunities that you have, right? So it's just taking advantage of an opportunity because it may not come next year, that type of thing. 
But if they lose, we're not going to remember the Mavericks as a failure team, really. Just, wow, this team had a great run and burnt out against a better team. Like, it's, it doesn't really hurt that bad. Um, if you're a Mavericks fan, you'll feel some pain because you lost, but you won't be in despair. For the Celtics, you made the finals already. You have home court. You had the best win, I mean, most wins in the league, right? Like, you have, you're up 2 0. You know, the, the Mavericks either have to go 4 0 or 4 1. To beat the Celtics, they either have to sweep you from the rest on in, or from here on out, or beat you four to one. There's you can't lose. If you lose, then I'm telling you, you are cooked. So that's interesting. But hey, this was a very fun video to watch. Um, for more videos like this, make sure to like this video. Uh, make sure to subscribe. It's the road to one thousand subscribers. And hey, thank you for joining the journey. And I'm gonna catch you guys on the next video. And I'm out of here. Peace.